Dear Bishop Williamson, I understand that you are willing to re-examine your position on the Holocaust. I am the biographer of one of the first women in Auschwitz. I sat by her side and listened to her story. Rena was number 1716 on the first transport of women into Auschwitz. And while you could read her story in its entirety, I have selected one section for you. I ask you also to read the Auschwitz Chronicles, compiled by Denuda Czech. These are the meticulous records of the SS and the Third Reich in Auschwitz. When I first heard that you denied the Holocaust and the gas chambers, I was angry at you. Now I am grateful. You have brought to the forefront once again the importance of not denying the Holocaust. And the fact is that Rena herself would have prayed for you. From Rena's Promise, A Story of Sisters in Auschwitz, by Rena Cornwright Gellison, page 134. We stand at roll call, waiting to be counted. They walk up and down the rows, counting, hitting, counting, shouting. Danka shifts on her feet, so I quickly cast my glance sideways. She's fine, just sore and hungry as I am. My fingers reach out and touch her hand reassuringly. Her fingers touch mine. This is our check-in. Every morning, if it's possible, we send this silent message to each other. I'm okay. We are in the front row today. This is unusual. Normally, we try to be in the back or the middle, hidden and anonymous. It's harder to watch or be prepared when we're among the first to receive whatever they have in mind. In the distance, I can see a column coming toward us. I have never seen anyone on this road before. My mind is churning as it wonders who is arriving today. Their feet try to march, but they're not doing a very good job of it. There is a whisper through our ranks. They've emptied a Jewish orphanage. Footnote 8 January 30th, 1943 518 children are killed in the gas chambers. On January 31st, 457 children are killed in the gas chambers. Source check, page 319, end footnote. The SS have their rifles up on their shoulders. March! Their orders snap through the stale morning air. My heart stops. My eyes focus on the column. Hundreds of pairs of tiny children's feet file past me and my sister and every woman in camp. Some of their little faces are buried in their toys, choking the stuffing out of these inanimate objects of comfort. The younger ones hold the older children's hands. Their eyes stare at us, big as saucers, lost as lambs. There is a tearful gasp somewhere deep inside our row. Is it a mother reminded of her own dear baby? Their innocent faces look around in wonderment at the fences, the buildings, the grown-ups. Do they think we are insane as I did when I first arrived? Are they wondering why so many grown-ups looking like their mamas and papas do nothing? Are they afraid? My mouth drops open. I cannot bear to look at this. I cannot turn away. They can't be serious. Why would anyone want to kill babies? How long will it take them to suffocate? Will they cry out in fear with no one to comfort them? The SS march them toward the gas chamber. Clutching dolls and stuffed animals close to their hearts, they shuffle past in rows of five, guarded by SS men with their dogs and rifles. What do they think these children are going to do? Escape? Revolt? But it is a rule. Always to the gas chamber, the SS are posted every fifth row on each side of the column, and they always follow rules. They don't want anyone around. They don't want the truth getting out. We know the truth. It has taken a long time for it to sink in, but there is no mistaking it anymore. The evidence is in the smoke-filled air and the empty compound after each selection. Still, they want no one disturbing their plans. The Germans have a saying, 
Order is order. They stick to their rules like glue. I am standing there just like a ghost. Their little angelic faces, the white knuckles of their tiny hands haunt me. I fight back my tears, my rage. My heart screams, stop, stop this madness. They're babies. Clenching my jaw, I shut my eyes. God? I rarely say God anymore, but seeing their faces reflected in my heart, I, I must try to pray one last time. God, you, you are my God and I believe in you. Won't you strike just one of these monsters down? Smite just one SS for these children, your children? You, whom I obey and believe in so much with all my heart? I have never held so much as a penny in my hand on the Sabbath, and since I was old enough to fast, I have always fasted on Yom Kippur. Don't allow this to happen. Give us a sign that you have not forsaken these children, the children of Israel. Never mind my suffering. It doesn't matter the time I have been in this place. Never mind all the things I've heard about people being burned and gassed, all the things I've seen for myself, not wanting to believe any of it's true. Never mind about me. What about these sweet children? For them, show them you are our God, and kill just one of these Nazis. My hands are fists of fury tight against my thighs. My eyes squeeze shut, holding a vision of lightning striking the guards in their neat and orderly tracks. Not one adult can move to save these toddlers. Only divine intervention can supersede now. Please, God! They fade in the distance, nearing the gas chambers. My heart screams for them to stop. Someone passes by me, then halts. Her feet crunch against the gravel road as she steps back to look at our stricken faces. Her hot breath hits my cheek. I open my eyes warily into the cool cruelty of Hassa's stare. Her clean boots, her polished and shiny skin, stand before us in full Aryan superiority. She has seen our agony. She has read my mind. I know from the moment I hear her voice that religion will never be the same. I will still pray. I will try to believe and have faith, but it will never be as pure and sincere as it once was. Her lips pull back into a grimace, which I am sure is meant to be a smile. Her words are harsh and staccato, like machine gun fire. They shoot us down. Where is your God now? The life drains out of me. There is no answer. We are miserable. Roll call is endless. To work would be a relief. Anything to take our minds off of those children. But there is no respite in this place. Smoke comes out of the chimneys. My nose quivers at the reek of burning flesh. The smell of little children being incinerated. The sun disappears behind a cloud of gray. If children cannot be saved, what is the use of praying for anything anymore? Hasa's voice plagues my wavering faith, dogging every breath I take. Where is your God now? My spirit withers. I do not know. When Rena's promise was finally published, Rena confided in me that she believed that God had finally answered her prayer. And if one person changes his or her mind in denying the Holocaust, then maybe her prayer has indeed been answered.